Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're discussing woodworking for beginners, and we're trying to talk about building a case, whether it's something complicated with a lot of dividers or something as simple as just a box with a door. There's some basics you have to understand about casework in order to be successful. That's what I'm going to cover. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. So even though this is what we would call shop furniture, there's still some basics that have to be adhered to. And if you want to have it so that drawers work properly and doors close properly, you pay attention to those. I always tell folks that whatever you build, the end result is the sum of the parts. So you can't be 80% close on half the parts and 100% on the other half and expect everything to work out. So top and bottom need to be parallel to one another and the same length. Sides need to be parallel to one another and the same length. Everything needs to be nice and square. Now, if you're evolving dividers, well then that puts a whole new level of uh, complication into it. So what we're gonna start off with is something very basic. We're going to build just a box, and that's all it really is, four sides, top, bottom, left and right, but we're gonna make it nice and square and we're gonna make it nice and sturdy, but we're going to keep it simple. So it's just going to be a single box with a single door, and actually I have something in mind. So on this side, what I need is a place to keep my protective gear. When I say protective gear, there's four pieces. I have two magnifiers, I have ear protection, and I have a respirator. I suppose I have glasses too, but they're always on my head. So there's not a whole lot of design work here. It's gonna be really simple, but we do have a couple of parameters. I want it to sit right here, and I want it to hold this equipment. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay this out. So right away I can tell that it's these two side by side, that's gonna make up my maximum width. And this is gonna hang a little bit lower than that is, so that's going to be my maximum length. So if I come up here and measure this, I need, comfortably, I need 17 inches on the inside. And for length, I don't wanna be bumping into pieces. For length, if we had 23 inches on the inside, that would be all good. So I'm just gonna jot that down, 17 or 23 by 17. I always like to put the length first. So this is the area that I have. I've got to avoid this plug so I can easily get 23 in there. Now you remember, if I want that, that's my inside dimension. I've got to add to that the thickness of the two outside pieces. And we'll assume they're gonna be three, uh, three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna add an inch and a half to that. So that's going to be 24 and a half would be the final length. And I can easily squeeze 24 and a half into there. And my length, 17, if we add on the thickness of the two outside pieces, we're talking about 18 and a half. Let's see what we have there. Got a little piece of trim here I've got to uh, work up against but I've got almost 20 inches so we can easily put that in there and I'll hug it to this side, which should be good. All right, so I can settle on those two dimensions. Now for the depth, uh, the, the thickest piece we're going to have is, is the hearing protection and that's four inches. But what I would like to do, and we'll talk a little more about this when we talk about doors, but I would like to have it so that my doors sit flush like everything else I have in here. Instead of them sitting out on the surface, they actually sit inside the case, which means it allows for you to get uh, show off your craftsmanship on how nicely you can fit that opening. And you actually, what's other, really nice about it is you can't slam it because it closes on a cushion of air. So we need to allow uh, four inches for that. So if we've got four inches, and then we've got our door, our door itself is gonna be three quarters, so that's gonna take up this space. And then we haven't talked about the back yet, but we will, but I'm going to allow uh, at least five eighths of an inch on the back. So we add that all together. 
we've got four and three quarter math. Convert that to six eighths. That's going to be 11 eighths. And if we reduce that fraction, we end up with three eighths of an inch over. So we've got four, five, five and three eighths is going to be our depth. So our overall dimensions are now going to be 23, pardon me, 24 and a half by 18 and a half by five and three eighths. So if you look around my shop, you're going to notice that anything's put together on a right angle corner is going to have a dovetail in it. Strongest way to join two pieces of wood, or in this case four. It'll last as long as the wood will last, and it just adds to it. So our decision is the joinery. Well, we've already got that decided. It's going to have dovetails. Something that you wouldn't normally spend a lot of time thinking about is actually the back of the cabinet. Uh, in this case, it's going to be it's front and center. We do a lot of filming in here, so it's going to be seen a lot. And it's going to be opened often because I'm always using that stuff. So instead of just using a plywood back, I'm going to have it match the rest of the case. And I'll tell you a little bit later what material we're going to use. But I'm going to use solid wood, and it's going to be something we call shiplap. First, problem that you have tried to use a one solid piece of wood then you've got to deal with seasonal expansion and depending on how big the case is that could be a bit of a pain but shiplap is nothing more than pieces of wood that have rabbits cut on opposite surfaces so that when you put it in place and secure them it allows for seasonal expansion but it also gives you something interesting to look at you've got that little groove there just to add a bit of detail so when you open up the door, you actually see that. So the material. Well, if you look, I've used two species for everything that I've built in this new shop so far. The casework is made out of northern white pine, and just a minute about that. I think it's a beautiful wood. It's light. It ages wonderfully. It just it develops this patina over time. It's easy to work, so if you're new to this, it's nice to have a material that you don't have to exercise a whole lot of effort to get through it. With nice sharp tools, it cuts beautifully. Uh, just lovely stuff. Not cheap, it's rather relatively expensive. So we're going to use pine for the case, the box. And just so that you know, when we do build the drawer, and we'll do that in another episode, we're actually going to use the, the uh, Douglas fir for the panel. I like that uh, pinkish color that it has, and I've got some really nice relatively old growth stuff that came, was reclaimed out of a building. We're going to use what you might call store-bought lumber for this. So this pine comes surfaced on four sides, top, bottom, and both edges. Um, the nice thing about that is the work's done for you if you don't have all the equipment. The downside is that oftentimes it's going to cup and twist just because it, where it sits from the time it's actually milled to the time you get it. So this piece is not bad at all. It's actually pretty flat, nice and straight. And I would just, a, a word of caution, if this was badly twisted now, I wouldn't even bother using it because if it's badly twisted, it's going to misbehave continually. So don't fight with it. Our next, let's just do our cutting list here real quick. So we need two pieces that are 24 and a half by 5 and 3 eighths. And we need two pieces that are 18 and a half by 5 and 3 eighths. And both are 3 quarter. Now, what I was going to suggest is we could take one long strip, cut it 5 and 3 eighths, and then we could literally fall, have the grain wrap all the way around the box. Yeah. In some cases, that's actually nice to do. Uh, in this case, it's going to be against the wall. You're only ever going to see, really, one edge because the bottom is going to be out of view, the top is going to be out of view, and the other side is going to be against that. So in this case, not worth it. The best utilization of the material in this case is going to be to take a, a, a one piece 24 and a half, and that'll give us the two sides, and then cut another piece 
that is 18 and a half, and that'll give us our two sides, and our total waste will literally be measured in sawdust, not in, uh, not in pieces that end up in the scrap bin. Now, give me a second to get this cut up and the pieces all milled, and then we'll take it from there. All right, here are our four pieces. They're all milled up, two long, our, two, our sides, top and bottom. Now it's imperative that everything be square, so easiest way to check it is just to measure from corner to corner and compare. So if I go corner to corner on this, I get nine and five sixteenths. And if I go corner to corner this way, I get nine and five sixteenths. Well, it only takes a second, so we may as well check both. And if that measures nine and five sixteenths, and I know the other one is, because that one already told me. We'll do the same thing on this. 25 and an eighth, 25 and an eighth. We'll just verify that any one of these is 25 and an eighth, and we're good to go. I left them just a little bit wide, and if you want to know how much, uh, we wanted five and three eighths. I'm five and just a shy seven sixteenths, so a little less than a sixteenth of an inch. The reason I did that, I wanted to get rid of both the mill marks from the jointer and the saw marks from the table saw. However, since when you put it together, there's always going to be a little bit of misalignment. What I'll do is after I've cut the dovetails, I'll show you how I plane two edges, both edges on two pieces and purposely make them narrower than the other. So after we assemble it, instead of trying to now come in and plane around a corner, if we purposely take this one down narrower before we assemble, that almost always leaves this one proud and it's easier to just to plane that right on by than it is to try to cross that joint. Okay, now I'm just putting a final finish on the inside of all the pieces. And I wanna make sure that you understand why that has to be done on the pin board in particular. Tailboard doesn't change, but the pin board, if we were to remove material on the inside after we've cut the joint, this triangle, the base of it, gets smaller. So this piece doesn't change as you remove material this way, but this piece does. So you always have to pre-finish your pin board, and you may as well do your tailboard as well because it's very difficult to do once it's already in place. But these are already cut. I'm just gonna put a final coat on this, our final pass on this, and we'll be ready to mark the pins. All right, now um, we've done lots of videos on dovetails, so we'll leave a link below and it'll walk you through that. But I just want to talk to you a little bit about the actual layout and how we're going to do this. Um, we, we want the dovetail to work in our favor, meaning if this is a hanging cabinet, gravity is going to be constantly pulling things down. And the dovetail really has strength in one direction. Glue gives it strength in both directions, but the actual physical properties of the dovetail, that wedging effect, works in this case, from pulling this piece apart from this piece. So that being the tail, we wanna put the tail on the sides. And these are the long pieces, so these are the sides. And this would be top and bottom. So these will have pins, these will have tails. Just have so, a quick look and see. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make this the outside. I'm just gonna put a top on there top on there. I know that's going to be the top side and that's going to be the outside. So I've got to determine the thickness of my two pieces and since they're both the same thickness I'll simply set my marking gauge on there, let the cutter drop, lock it. This is going to be the tailboard so the tailboard will end up having a mark all the way around. I don't want it too deep on the outside. I'd like to prefer to be able to get rid of it. I want it nice and deep on the edge. It can be deep on the inside and nice and deep on the edge. Careful, those cutters, they're sharp. Okay, now I'm gonna actually turn this this way so you can see it. Normally I would have the face, which is gonna be the outside, in my direction, but for you to be able to see what's going on, I'll turn it this way. So on something three quarter, by five and three eighths, I'm gonna suggest it be right about there. Yeah, maybe a little bit smaller. So I'll leave a mark in from either end, and just to make it easier to follow, I'm gonna use a one in six ratio, which means 
about 10 degrees. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll set that aside. How many tails? The more tails we have, the more glue surface. Too many tails and we weaken the pin board. So I'm just going to experiment it first. And what I look at primarily is the rectangle. You want, I like something that's pleasing to look at. One, two, three. Uh, so the decision is going to be, are we going to go three or four? So let's go three first. Start at your baseline. All right, we'll go ahead and identify our waste. Dovetails are cut. And now, before we assemble this, we're actually going to plane. I think I'll do it on the two long edges. We'll plane, take four or five passes off of each of these edges so that when we put it together, we just have to come in and plane this one down to that one. But I don't want to do that yet. I want that same reference point for cutting the rabbit that we're going to cut on the back, or rebate if you want to call it that, on the back that's going to house our shiplap back. So we gotta make sure that we get these properly situated. And I marked, the uh, ones I marked are they're gonna be the ones that are actually up front. So I'm gonna go ahead with a pencil and mark right on here, front. That's just so when I go over to the table saw, I make sure I reference off of the proper side. And then right there. This one. We've got three quarter material. I want lots of purchase for the shiplap to sit on. So I'm gonna suggest that we cut a half inch rabbit that'll go five sixteenths of an inch deep. So we want this to be sticking, sticking up a half of an inch. So we've got it up half of an inch. Now what we need to do is determine where the blades first meet the wood. So I'm going to get a table next to the fence and then simply come in. Makes contact right there. So I'm going to put a line and then I need to do the same thing on the back side. Now we don't want to accidentally come out here and cut part of the tail, so what we'll do, this is the inside, make sure we get this right. So what we'll do is come in here, we'll set this down on the cutters, and then go forward. When we get out here to the end, oh, we've got to raise that up a little bit. When we get out here to the end, wherever we want to stop, and I'm going to suggest that we put a mark on here, a little less than a quarter of an inch. Yeah, actually, that's not true either. We want to go a half an inch. So we'll put a mark somewhere back here. And we'll do the same thing up here. We'll put a mark right about there. And now we know that what we want to do is start like this, so that this line and that line might meet up, 
and when we go all the way through the cut, we'll stop when this line and this line. And I've got a paddle switch on here, so rather than try to move this piece while the saw is running, I'll just hit that with my knee, wait for it to stop, and then I can safely remove the board. Hold that firmly. Now go ahead and do the other ones, same thing, put a mark in here, now I'm going to go through and I'll show you a sample of how we do or how we finish this rabbit on the two different pieces because obviously they're going to be a little bit different. We'll do the easy one first. So we want to come in and just continue this cut and take out that little corner, which is part of the radius of the saw. So I'm going to use my marking gauge. And we could use it this way, but it's going to be difficult because you don't have a lot of reference down below. If I turn it and use it this way, then the problem is that the cutter puts the bevel on the side that we want nice and square. So I've got two options. I can make a really light cut, or I can go in and I can turn that cutter around. Uh, let's just decide. I think we can just do it this way. I'm just going to make a really light pass. Just enough to see. Same thing on this end. Now we'll put this in the vise. And depending on the way the grain runs, we'll determine how aggressively we can attack this. But I'm going to start out here. That's quite easy to cut. When I do this, I have my thumb over top of the chisel and I can lean on it. And instead of pushing like this, which doesn't allow for a lot of control, by having it in tight, I can simply lean forward and use my body weight to close in on that and apply all the pressure I need to cut through that nice, clear white pine. And we'll just come to the bottom, clean that off. I didn't quite go far enough. Now, I don't want to try to hog out too much at once. If you just take several small chops, then eventually you can come in, put your chisel in that gauge line, and it's a real easy downward pair. We just come along the bottom, lay the chisel flat on the rabbit, and then just cut into the corner. Now we got a little bit of a bump right there, but I'm going to clean that up with a plane called a router plane. So the next one is the pin board and what we're going to do on this is we first have to outline where we're going to go so I'll take my quarter inch our marking gauge set for quarter of an inch and I'm going to leave a light line across the end and I'll meet it with this one try not to go beyond that's a nice thing about a wheel style gauge is that as you get close to where you want you can just roll it to finish it Okay, now we've got to come down the side. We want that to be square. Now we're going to be working on a relatively small piece. So to ensure that it doesn't break off, I'm going to put another piece of wood like so. It'll just take some of the pressure. I'm using my half inch, and this is a, uh, I call it my 17 degree chisel. I use it only for softwoods but I've got a really acute angle on there of 17 degrees and it allows you to go in and cut really soft material like this with uh, the kind of accuracy and precision that a, a chisel with a steeper bevel 
will often crush the fibers. It makes it very hard to get a nice clean cut and to get control. With this, I find it goes in there and just does a wonderful job. Now I'm gonna start back here and I'm, I've got my chisel held with the thumb on the top so I can lean on it instead of having to use a mallet or pushing out here with the extension of my arm. I keep it in here tight. I just lean forward to apply whatever pressure and it gives me lots of control. On my, with my left hand, I anchor it against the behind the chisel. I use my thumb on the edge of the chisel to help guide it in there. And I'm gonna come in here. If that's where the uh, radius of the blade started, I'm gonna come in here about a sixteenth of an inch and just make a, several cuts. I'm not worried about banging into this because it's going to be underneath the shiplap. What we're doing is we're cutting across the grain. If we tried to do it out here, you're almost always gonna have a split on that small piece, you'd end up breaking a piece off. But if we take multiple small chops, number one, or first of all, because they're small, they're very, they require very little effort. Very little effort means we get lots of control. And I'm just gonna, I'm not in a hurry. Now, I want that to be nice and neat, so I'm going to get close to the line. And I'm going to clean this material out, and then I'll go back in and I'll finish that. Now, with the chisel beveled down, which allows me to control the depth of a cut, I'm just going to come in there and slide off these little miniature slices of bread. See how easy that cuts? Now, I didn't get deep enough here, so I'll get caught up behind it. Now, I'm, I'm using this radius of the saw as my guide, so I know how deep I need to go. But obviously, my chisel didn't make it all the way down. So let me just clean up this material. This is another area where I'm going to get a better cut using the router plane, but I'll work to my line while I can. Now we'll just go in there and finish what we were doing by getting a little deeper. Now I'm going to come in here and take just about a half at a time. Okay. So we followed the line all the way around. So we've got a nice clean inside corner. And when we put this together with the other piece, it'll, that rabbit will just continue all the way through. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit deeper than what we had already cut it. Right, lock that in place. Okay, now that's starting to fight, so I'm gonna go the other direction. Now I'll have to chisel a little bit in the corner, but I, that's not a big deal. Okay, that's nice and clean. This is just a long shooting board to make it easier to work with long pieces. So what I'm going to do is take five passes off each edge, meaning 
this side and that side, and on the other long piece as well. smoother cut going this way. Okay, assembly time. Now if something's gonna go wrong, this is when it's gonna happen. Actually, after everything is glued up, then it'll happen. So I've got a piece of uh, melamine covered MDF to protect my table my bench, and that's where I'm gonna do the gluing, and the glue doesn't stick to it. I've got my pieces laid out exactly how they're gonna go, and there's a sequence you have to follow when you're putting dovetails together. You have to put pins into tails, and then pins into tails, and then the last piece will come down, tails onto pins on both sides. In other words, you'll uh, paint yourself into a corner. Place. I've gone through and checked. I cut chamfers on the inside of all the tails, making sure not to come out to the end. I made sure that the inside corners are nice and clean. I don't have any debris in the way. Rabbits have all been cut. Inside surfaces have been finished. So, shouldn't be anything holding us up. We'll go one at a time. We, I'm gonna glue both parts. I only glue the long grain surfaces. So, no, actually, I'm gonna opt for this. Now I can take my square and just set it like that, and then use that as a reference. Now when it gets close, or closed, come out here, just hang it over the end, so that if these are a little bit proud of the tailboard, It'll allow them to go down all the way so that we close this joint where the socket between the pins meets the face of the tail. Now, let's just look at this. Okay, this is out a little. So, just push that back. Okay, and that closes up those gaps. Now I'm going to give it another little tap. You want to have the pressure on all of the pins. Okay, that's good and tight. Don't go for close, go for right on. So I'll keep pulling on that until I get it. So that when I put that in, I'm just going to make sure I don't have any glue stuck on there from a previous project that's holding it out. Come on now. I don't want to pull it too much. There. Okay, now we gotta go over and do the other one. It's not a bad idea to just go in there and put a clamp right across these two pieces, these two half pins. There's not a lot, there's no material out here helping to support them, so they're kind of all by themselves. So I'll just go in there and put a little bit of pressure on there. And try to spread the glue so that you cover the entire surface. Okay. Always start these by hand before you start pounding on them. That way, you don't uh, have something misaligned and you're starting to beat on it. Next thing you know, you've got a lot of dents to deal with. That's close, we've got to sink that. So I'm gonna take this off. Slide this over so that it's just out beyond. OK, 
Okay, now we have a little bit of a gap right there. So what I'm going to do is flip this around. This is the gap I have. And I'm going to put a clamp on here. And the reason is the clamp will help me hold any gains I get. And by that, I mean I'm going to come in here with a block of wood. And I'm going to tap right on this, right up tight to the pin, meaning the glue starts to set up between the tail and the pin. So if you tap here, you may very well have these fibers pop up because they've stuck to the pin instead of staying attached to the tail. So you get right in there on the glue line and then give that a little tap and see if we can't close this. And by having this clamp on there, it'll help us hold anything we get. Okay, I think that's closed. Now let's just check that. That's nice and square. That one's square. Before I proceed, I'm going to give this a little bit of time for these outside half pins to tack up because I can't work with, I can't turn this over and put the other side in, but these are still on. I need it in order to hold that. So I'll give that about 15 minutes with the clamps on before I put the second piece. Just checking my shoulders and the shoulders are nice and tight, which is all good. And this, the pin boards are proud, so that means what we did worked. We just have to go in there and plane the, those two edges until they're flush. So we'll give that 15 minutes and we'll come back and put the second piece on, or the last piece. But that's been in the clamps long enough. I, I forgot to mention, you want to have, always have a rag handy too. It sometimes gets messy. Okay, that should be enough to hold that. Now, if I was doing a really big case, what I would do is actually put this in place, start it just a little bit on both sides, then go in and glue everything so it's all right here and then put it together. Because if you've got a lot of tails and pins, that glue is going to start skimming over before you even get the rest of the gluing done. All right. Nice thing about this uh, knife is you can just put a dab of glue on and then essentially push it up against the side and it'll spread. Now, remember to start them by hand first. Now it's really nice when you're doing something like this, a box, if when you come to the other side, everything is perfectly lined up. Now, if I just let that drop where it is, I've got to move it, but just barely, which means everything should be nice and square. If you've got to move it over a half an inch, and you know you've got some serious twist in there. Now, don't put the whole thing together in one corner versus uh, before you do the other. Just do it in stages. I think I'm going to use that block. I like the way it puts everything together at the same time. Okay, so we want to check, make sure everything is tight. It's tight. Now, set that in place. Now, we check our diagonals. They should be the same. So if we measure from the outside to the outside, this one is just a little over 30 and 11 sixteenths. And if we measure from this side to this side, just a little over 30 and 11 sixteenths, right on. Perfect. Our last step, and we can do, actually do it now because there's enough friction and uh, contact area that that'll stay together. If you're nervous about it, you can let it dry first. But what we're going to do is go in and plane this flush. Now, 
I got a bit of a gap right there. I don't like that because I don't have it anywhere else. So before I go any further, what I'm gonna do is grab a long clamp and see if I can't fix that. Oh, look at that, short by a half an inch. I don't have to worry about miring the outside because I haven't planed that yet. But I'm gonna come in here. Pull that in. Now, that won't do any good unless we do something to hold that gain. So what we'll do is come in here and put our clamp on the two half pins on, on either side. And once we've pulled this in, I don't wanna pull too hard because we don't wanna pull this out of square. Now we can come in here and clamp this. And you can't see it, but over here we're getting some squeeze out, which means we're getting some pressure between this half pin and the tail. So that means when that glue dries, that'll hold it and we'll fix that gap. So, okay, this has had 45 minutes. So, that all should have held. I put a clamp on that one as well, just because. Okay, so that's held its position. I'm gonna, I'm going to use my block plane instead of instead of my jack plane on this just because a little more control okay sides are all plain flush Joints are the uh, edges are flush. Bottom is done. Now let's just check this one more time. We are sitting at just under 30 and 11 sixteenths. And just under 30 and 11 sixteenths, so we're going to square. So if you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.